Well, good morning. Here we are, the 23rd of October, and it is Thank You Day. 23rd of October. Oh the my year goodness, has I gone. know. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, the AFL has said that today is Thank You Day. Yes. Because we haven't got an AFL holiday today. Apparently. Well, here, here, here in Victoria? Well, here in Victoria, we haven't got a holiday. I don't think we've had a holiday. Well, actually, we've been on holidays for the last eight months, haven't we? <laughs> That's not story. If you want to call this a holiday. But yeah. um, uh, the but AFL has deemed this day a Thank You Day. A thank You Day. Well, and I think we should say thank you to a lot of different people. Yeah, there's the doctors and nurses, you know, people who are out there in the front line kind the of thing. The front line people are amazing. Yes. And we, uh, if I was wearing a hat right now, I'd take it off for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, look, to think that uh, the jobs that they do, and they are pretty risky things, you know. Yes, they put, them, so they put themselves at risk in order to take, care of, uh, to take care of, you know, the general population, really, isn't doctors, it? Doctors, nurses, clinicians, all mm-hmm. sorts yes. of... Uh, Ambulance drivers, even, yeah. the, even the police. Come on, they, they've, oh, had, yeah. a, they've oh, had a hard time. They too, have, you know, yes, they've had a hard time. Chasing people around when they should be at home. That's another story. <laughs> and wearing their masks. And wearing their masks wearing and their all masks, that type of stuff. Yeah. So, look, we do say um, thank you to all yes, the frontline workers mm. for the great and amazing work you do. And putting themselves at risk, R- yes. Risk. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether I can say a complete thank you to the AFL for being in Brisbane at the moment, <laughs> although it's not really their fault. No, it's not their fault. It's not anybody's fault. But to think mm-hmm. to think that there is no yeah. grand final at the in MCG. Victoria, at the MCG. At the MCG. It's the, the end mecca of, the... of, you know, grand finals. It's the end of the world. <laughs> no grand final in Victoria. I know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are we going to do on that day? I mean, look, uh, I watch know. it on television. Yeah, great. Mm. But uh, also, I wonder, yeah, the people that are playing. I mean, I don't know uh, <laughs> the, the teams we'll that have, are playing. We'll have to wait and see. We'll but, have to uh, wait and see. But that's football. But do you remember what you were doing last year on grand final day? What were, we, what were you doing? What were all the men doing? We were at uh, Antonio and All Cecilia's place. All the men place. were at there watching, having, what, having we a barbecue. In, we were, uh, there was um, uh, Liberato. Um, asado. Um, no, 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 no. We had, asado was on the barbecue, not Liberato. <laughs> um, we, we, Liberato, yeah, he was cooking the asado, the barbecue, the, yeah. the Argentine Chilean barbecue. Yeah, and yeah, we so all chipped in and we had food, we had drink and we watched. The grand final together on Antonio's TV that kept on blacking out because <laughs> he needed to change it, but he well, didn't. Well, that's not happening this year. No, because uh, we're no barbecue, no Antonio. So, uh, no place. nothing. No nothing. No, no nothing. <laughs> so well, we might have a barbecue, you and I, Chris, at home. Okay, all right. What would you like on the barbecue? I don't know. I'm sick of eating meat. You are. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, tell all right. us, have you got something nice to share? Yeah, I have. Question to you. Yes. Do you remember our marriage vows? I remember for better or for worse. <laughs> I, I, remember, remember, I remember for richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. <laughs> and the poorer sort of stuck a little bit. But, uh, in sickness and in health. Sickness and health. <laughs> to live and to cherish, till death do us part according to God's holy ordinance. I should and know that. You, you do because you, you marry people all the time. You perform their weddings. I so perform their weddings. The weddings I don't, don't marry them all the time because I've only married you. Yes, that's right. And the thing is, you know, um, you, you, you promise to love and comfort, honour and keep in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, keep only unto, you know, him or her, your wife, your husband, so long as you both shall live. Now, interestingly, in the Old Testament, God describes his relationship between himself and his people as a marriage. He does that, you know, a few times in the Old Testament. And I remember hearing a Messianic Jew once describe the Ten Commandments as marriage vows. And I thought, Oh, that's interesting because that really just stuck with me that the Ten Commandments are like a marriage vow. Now, in Exodus chapter 34, 27 to 28, it says this, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. 
And then in verse 28, halfway through, it says, And Moses wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, that is, the Ten Commandments. So what we have here is that God entered into a conditional covenant, an agreement that God would provide, protect and bless his people if they kept his commandments. Now, let's just quickly run through the Ten Commandments quickly. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honour your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Now the issue here is that God and the Israelites entered into this covenant, an agreement with God. They agreed, yes, God, we will enter into this covenant with you. A conditional promise made by God to the Israelites and to the whole of humanity, actually. God promised to protect them if they keep His law and remained faithful to Him. However, unfortunately, Israel uh, Israel was unfaithful. They didn't keep God's commandments. They didn't follow God's um, commandments, which are the terms of the agreement or the terms of the covenant. And God describes, interestingly, God describes their disobedience as betrayal as an unfaithful wife. And it comes to that marriage issue again, as an unfaithful wife. But here, what we see is actually God's grace because God keeps his side of the agreement, even though his people did not keep their side of the agreement. They did not keep his commandments. They were unfaithful. They started to worship other gods and make idols and and they didn't keep his commandments. And so God could have said, oh, well, you didn't keep your part of the deal. I'm not keeping mine. But God's grace is so great that he actually kept his part of the agreement. He did that even though they failed to keep theirs. So all the way back then, how great was God's love and how gracious was He. That when The Bible says that when we were yet sinners, God sent His Son. But in other words, what we could say, even when we failed to keep our end of the agreement, God still sent His Son. So way back there, we see the grace of God. We see it in fruition when He sends His Son Jesus to to be born, to live, to die, and is resurrected for our salvation. But His grace, all the way back then, He could have said, well, too bad, you didn't keep your part, I'm not keeping mine. Uh -uh. God loves us so much. His grace is evident all the way back in the Old Testament from the beginning of time as we know it. And interestingly, the concept of marriage vows, I kind of think... um, you know, forsaking all others, you know, no other gods, no other, you know, don't worship anything else. You know, it's a relationship and that's what God wants with us, a relationship. Forsaking no others. Forsaking all others. Forsaking all others. And forsaking and all others. And clinging only to, to Leave God. Leave and cleave, the Bible yes, says. Yes. Leave your mother and father and uh, join to your wife, your spouse. Your spouse. Your spouse. Your spouse. Mm. It's interesting how while well, the Bible says gives that commandment to the man. Yes. It's why their husband should leave his his father and mother and cleave to his wife, mm-hmm. to his spouse, um, which is interesting because the initiative there is for the husband to lead the way on what should, you know, constitute a, a, a godly marriage. And yes. I think that's that's very important even for today. Mm-hmm. Mm, I think so. I think we can actually commit this thought, this mm. sharing to the Lord. Amen. Why don't we do that? Amen. Lord, we uh, see how even though at times we fall short and maybe we don't keep our side of the bargain all that well. But Lord God, your faithfulness is something which is, is, is outstanding because you never let us down. We might let you down, but you never let us down. Okay. And Lord God, we, uh, we think about our relationship with you and sometimes we wander off, but you're always there ready to receive us just like the prodigal son. And I pray, Lord God, we would never forget this, that your arms are always open. And Lord God, we pray and we see, Lord, the, the need to, to continually commit ourselves to you in all things. Father, thank you for this word. And I pray in Jesus' name that you bless us the remainder of this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. We'll hopefully see you soon. We will. Well, you'll see us. Bless you. <laughs>